Session is resumed. With the consent of the Senate, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 2894 under Committee Report Number 200. This is the bill on the basic law for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, Mr. President. The motion is in order. Approved. Mr. President, the parliamentary status is that we are in the period of interpolation. I move that we recognize the sponsor, Senator Marcos. Senator Marcos is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we recognize Senator Soto to continue his interpolation. Senator Soto is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Will the distinguished gentleman uh, uh, accept my um, continuation? of my uh, part two interpolation, Mr. President. Certainly, Mr. President, I yield uh, to the gentleman from Quezon City. Thank you. Mr. President, um, when we ended our conversation or interpolation last Wednesday, we were uh, on Section 57. Actually, we ended with Section 57. Let me go to uh, Section 58 now, Mr. President. This is the qualifications of the Chief Minister. One of the qualifications of the Chief, Mi Chief Minister is that he or she is a bona fide resident of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. How do we determine that he or she is a bona fide resident? Who and who de determines the same, Mr. President? The, uh, resi the residency will be determined uh, by the uh, COMELEC, uh, and uh, they, will cert they will be going back to the uh, records of uh, <coughs> <coughs> the Supreme Court, Mr. President, has uh, has uh, set out already standards to the resident of uh, what what is uh, the requirements for uh, residency to be recognized, and that is uh, what the same standards that will be used for um, the chief minister of the Bangsamoro Parliament. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, the um, in your bill, section 59 and 63 provides that the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister shall be elected from amongst the members of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region Parliament. The members of the Parliament may serve up to three consecutive terms. Should there be... Um, uh, I, I'm wondering, Mr. President, should there not be uh, a limit also as to how many terms a member can be a Chief Minister or Deputy Chief Minister of the Parliament, considering that the Chief Minister performs the functions of both a head of government and head of the legislature of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region? Uh, we, do not have, uh, we do not have any term limits. We have not specified any term limits because generally speaking, the, uh, uh, it is customary for the head of the legislative body to be, to be allowed to serve as many terms as he is allowed to serve, uh, he or she is allowed to serve uh, oh. as a oh. member of parliament. So the limitations that will the, of the on the terms on the member of the members of parliament will apply to the chief minister. Well, yes, we were thinking that uh, should it not be just say one term or two terms as chief minister and not the full three terms uh, well I'm just speaking on the mind of the gentleman yeah. Mr. President, well, Mr. President uh, it's just an idea the thing is is that there is there is no um, for the head of the legislature in the same fashion as our Senate president or the speaker mm. of the house there is no term uh, they, they serve at the at the pleasure of the body and so it's possible that uh, a chief minister might be elected mm. and that uh, mm. some, some few, few oh. weeks <laughs> months yeah. Down the line, as we have seen in other parliaments in other countries, there will be a vote of no confidence, and the leadership is uh, is vacated, and the new leadership is is elected. So the the question of term limits does not necessarily apply when it comes to the head of the legislature, because it is simply uh, there, because for one thing there is no term, 
uh, and it is simply uh, at the pleasure of the uh, body um, of the members of parliament. I, um, I will uh, concur with that answer, Mr. President. Thank you. Now, um, under Section 60, Paragraph B, the Chief Minister has the power to appoint certain positions in the Autonomous <coughs> Region, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Should the appointment of heads of ministries, agencies, bureaus, and offices of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region be subject to guidelines and qualifications to avoid any biases on the appointment and to prevent unqualified appointees unfit for the position? Well, uh, we could we could include uh, more uh, qu uh, very specific qualifications um, in that uh, I think. But what we uh, I think it really is left to the discretion <coughs> in the same again in the same fashion as it is left very much to the discretion of the president as to who he would like to nominate to the positions um, as heads of departments and members of his cabinet. Uh, so, so as to give uh, the, in this case, the chief minister, a full scope of choice uh, that he might want to, it might, for example, it, it, in, our, in the case of the national government, we do not, for example, uh, require um, the Department of uh, Agriculture uh, be headed by an agriculturist. Uh, so, and so that the, the, the reason that is, is that it, not, does, it might be the opinion of the president when he, know, he or she nominates the, uh, uh, the head of the department or the secretary of the department that they will, that, uh, that uh, he can choose, he or she can choose uh, anyone that he, they think is, is most qualified. So we leave it to the discretion of the chief minister. In the same fashion, mm. we leave it, mm. uh, since it is the, on the executive department, since it is in the executive department, then we leave it to the head of the executive department to decide who should head the different uh, offices that are under the executive department. But you see, Mr. President, in the national government, um, there is an agency that ensures that the, the appointees are qualified as a check and balance, like the Commission on Appointments. Oh, well. Uh, so, do you think there should be uh, some kind of a agency in the parliament or in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region that uh, can act uh, like uh, something like that? Like the Commission on Appointments, yes, Mr. Uh -huh. President? Uh, that is probably a good idea, but that will again be up to the Bangsamoro Parliament to decide in its rules how the process of nomination and appointment will be undertaken. Uh, we do not, uh, again, because what we are talking about here is very much, uh, uh, we come again, we, we talk mm. about autonomy again, we leave mm. as much of that discretion and of those decisions to the Chief Minister uh, and do not limit the number of choices that he might have. Uh, so that's, uh, that is uh, simply um, following, again, trying as much as possible to allow the greatest degree of autonomy that it is possible for the regional uh, regional government. Well, um, definitely, I am in favor of uh, local autonomy, but uh, uh, sometimes there is uh, there should be some limits. Uh, um, if you do not mind, Mr. President, I I will as as I done before. I will take a look, a second look at that suggestion of mine and perhaps uh, if it is if i think it's necessary i will propose it to the gentleman it will be up to the gentleman if he will so decide or not uh, i i, but I, I think a, a, a body that can review uh, again mm. like the commission on appointments but mm. within the uh, bangsamoro parliament within the parliament yes yeah, something to that effect perhaps perhaps let me might make a study some, on that some, some kind of review board just uh -huh. to make sure that uh, uh, well number one that the uh, the such such uh, normal requirements as educational attainment, age, and things like yes. that uh -huh. are are satisfied. And furthermore, uh, as we do in the commission on appointments, we also question nominees on policy yes. and on their Precisely. past experiences and what uh, uh, how that will indicate uh, which direction they will take their department in terms of policy making. So uh, that is something that we could do, but. The, it is, it, it is uh, because the, in our case, and in the national government, in our case, the executive department is distinct, clearly distinct from the legislative department. 
and that's why this is a check and balance. Whereas in this case, the executive mm. department is, is, also, is headed by the chief minister mm. Mm -hmm. and so also <coughs> the legislative department. Uh, so we would have to find a, a way to, be, because if the chief minister is still in, is involved in nominating and will also be in, 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 involved in reviewing his own uh, nomination, that would seem to be a, 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 an unnecessary step. Um, maybe if we can find a way so as to make it a true system of checks and balances. Uh, that, but that, uh, that means that somehow the chief minister would no longer would, although sitting as chief minister, would be removed from the process of examining, of uh, questioning, of uh, uh, reviewing the nominees. So, the, the, where would the? I just I'm just speculating yeah. now, trying yes. to see where, how we could do it. Yes. For, would it be members of parliament that would be uh, yeah. that would be on that review board? It's an idea, Mr. President. Now, yeah. um, let me look back at history. During the time of your father, Mr. President, uh, what was the what was uh, the, the the way they did it during the parliament? In the interim bata sa pambasa. I'm sorry. What was the during the time of your father? Yes. In the interim bata sa pambansa, the ministers who were appointed by then the prime minister, mm -hmm. uh, did they undergo such a, a, a review? Yes, a they, review. They, yes. As a matter of fact, they did, um, and uh, the, many, uh, many times the uh, the uh, uh, in the during the IBP, many times the ministers were. Uh, made to appear not only on the confirmation of their appointment, but on specific issues. So that uh, that one is clearly yeah. a very clear check and balance on the yeah. executive and the legislature legislative oversight function. All right. So, so uh, dito magmedyo nakakaiba dahil isa lang ang body that uh, panggagalingan. Uh, there, there is of course there is always the ultimate sanction of uh, the bangsamor of the parliament. Um, uh, casting a no confidence vote and removing if the, for, for, for abuse of power or for uh, incompetence mm -hmm. or for somehow uh, 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 disagreeing with the policy that is laid out by the Bangsamoro government. So there is that, there is that, uh, there is that power that they have, but it does not include a, a review as uh, the gentleman is proposing. All right. As I said, um, I, I'll, I'll take a second look, and if you don't mind, we will be consulting with your office. Yes, thank you. Yes, please. We now. would be okay. very uh, uh, <clears throat> interested to see uh, what kind of system we could come up with. All right. Thank you. Now, um, on the status of these appointees, uh, will they be co-terminus co with the chief minister? Or uh, what happens if, let's say, uh, the chief minister is uh, removed by the parliament? Well, uh, they would have to. They would have to leave their positions, and the uh, the new chief minister would have to form a new government. He would have to form a new uh, cabinet. So, co-terminus, by the way. I would imagine. I uh, yes, yes, it would have to right. be co-terminus okay, because these are uh, these are his subordinates. These are his lieutenants. These are his alter mm -hmm. egos. And if the chief minister is removed and changed, then it would again have to be the alter ego of the new chief minister. Thank you for that, Mr. President. In we do not find in your ber version the provision on the titular head of the Bangsamoro, the Wali. May we know the rationale for not including this? Uh, we could not actually. We we uh, that's what that was a subject of great study and and, and a great a long a great good deal of debate, uh, because there was a, there, there seems to be, in the definition of what a wali is, that the wali is someone who is close to God, or somebody who is a friend of God or a student of Allah. Uh, this is always something that comes up, and we thought that it was. Um, inappropriate to have a religious figure uh, in government uh, to, to follow the, the dictum and the principle of the separation of church and state. Uh, secondly, uh, we have, there was no real definition of what the Wali was supposed, of what the Wali is and what, it is, what they are supposed to do. 
uh, in, the, in the original version of the draft BBL, they are merely uh, to, uh, to uh, be part of uh, any, any uh, uh, as, I, as I said, there will be a figurehead uh, for the, for the Bangsamoro Parliament, and they would be uh, involved on ceremonial duties alone. And uh, and one of the one of the things that that's, that was uh, that was explained to us by members of the different sultanates is that we asked what is the what is the role of the wali and where does it come from uh, and they said the wali in our case in the sultanate's case is that the wali is the representative of the sultan and the sultanates uh, the sultans were saying we do not need a representative since we are available. Uh, to the uh, to the uh, to, to to represent ourselves. Furthermore, this is this is part of the system that was the wali is ex is again part of the system that was uh, lifted, copied uh, from the Malaysian system. So again, this brought about this um, uh, this concern that uh, why are why are we why are we organizing this government uh, in the exact same form as they have in the federated states of malaysia and uh, which immediately raised the specter of separatism and maybe this is because uh, they have planned to move uh, to 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 to, to uh, uh, transfer from the Philippines to Malaysia, and this was the first step, etc., etc. Again, to remove all of those doubts, mm. uh, we it, it was it, it was I think agreed that the Wali is not actually necessary, and the job of the Bangsamoro Parliament can very well be uh, can very well be um, uh, uh, done without a Wali there. So, to 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 the, the two reasons to separate church and state. Uh, secondly, to uh, uh, to to uh, assure any of those who had fears that this is somehow a beginning uh, to separatism again, uh, that was a, that was a, a, an issue that I think that uh, removing the role of the Wali from the Bangsamoro government is, uh, was was uh, was uh, advisable. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for that. Um, in Section 61, you want the uh, Chief Minister to take his oath to the President of the Republic, uh, I agree with that, Mr. President. I, I think I can sense your underlying reason, reason for it. I, yes, the, <laughs> it's really very simple. Once again, to, uh, to stress the point. Yes, that they, to make sure that's that right. they, they are in fact, uh, they yes. are in fact a part of the national All government right. and not All a right. separate one. Thank you. Now, um, I have a fairly good idea of this one, but uh, the next one, but uh, just to place it on record, I hope you spread it into the records. Why are we designating the Chief Minister to be an ex officio member of the National Security Council and the National Economic and Development Authority, Mr. President? Well, the, 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 there are two, two different uh, reasons for uh, the, the ex officio membership of the Chief Minister in the different bodies. The National Security Council is clearly because security issues are very, very prevalent in uh, Muslim Mindanao. And the help of the Chief Minister in uh, trying, to, trying to alleviate the, uh, the fighting, uh, trying to, to improve the situation in the conflict areas was thought to be absolutely necessary uh, to, uh, to be able to solve or at least um, uh, address the problems in the conflict areas. Not, uh, so if there is an uprising, if there is somehow a localized fight of some kind, uh, that would uh, be, be of concern, to, it would become a security concern for the entire country. Then, uh, in Muslim Mindanao, then it is, uh, I, I think it was right, uh, rightly felt that the Chief Minister should be involved in the decisions that the National Security Council would be making, especially when it comes to uh, the uh, uh, the the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. In the case of in the case of the NEDA, uh, it is foreseen that a very important part of this peace uh, the peace process will be the development of Muslim Mindanao, and that is why uh, that is that is a key component 
and I think that it is a necessary component and unless we actually achieve that accelerated development for Muslim Mindanao, then the peace process cannot completely be successful. And uh, so to, to, to make that, uh, uh, to make that, uh, uh, that process more streamlined and more coordinated with the policies of national government, then it was felt also that the chief minister should be, should be able to have a voice and a vote in the NEDA and when it comes to the plans for uh, economic development uh, in Muslim Mindanao. Um, I totally agree, Mr. President, especially on the issue of uh, security. Yes. Uh, I'm glad that you spread that into the records. Let me make on record also a statement that was attributed to me in one of the newspapers today. And I uh, would like to place on record the fact that I did say that. Uh, that is the, um, uh, my uh, concern about the kidnapped uh, foreigners and the Filipina in the uh, island garden city of Samal. I was hoping that the MILF, to show their mastery and control of Mindanao, can uh, rescue these uh, hostages from whoever is holding them or have uh, taken them. As a matter of fact, I have challenged them that if they do, I will terminate my interpolation on the BBL and uh, work for its speedy uh, passage, Mr. President, because it shows that they can really maintain peace in that area, and that is the reason for uh, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, Mr. President. Well, I, I quite agree, Mr. President. I think in the, in the cases, uh, the cases that are in such cases as that has, has been mentioned, uh, the kidnapping in Samal Island, I think that certainly we would need the assistance. Um, it would certainly make the process of, uh, of uh, finding and uh, arresting the perpetrators of such a crime much easier with the assistance of not only the MILF but uh, the local, uh, uh, the, all the local uh, uh, sec uh, the, the different sectors in the local communities. Um, of course, the, we, we already have a great uh, we have a great deal of uh, presence military presence there but uh, as we know these are sometimes such rather insular communities and uh, they they really keep to themselves and it would take a so-called insider to actually be able to find out the, the 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 important intelligence as to what has happened to all of these uh, uh, all of these victims in the case in it, it has happened before that um, uh, in cases of kidnapping, uh, that immediately, uh, even if the AFP and the PNP have yet to conclude their investigation, that members of the local community, be they local government uh, officials, uh, be they uh, members of the MNLF, members of the MILF, uh, or even just uh, civilians in the local community, uh, even before uh, the government forces had been able to conclude or to come to any findings in their investigation that the intelligence or the information that was necessary to find uh, the victims and to find also uh, and to identify those who, who had committed that crime, uh, were, this information was given to the government and made uh, facilitated indeed, made very quick the, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the conclusion, to bring to a conclusion the investigation and to bring uh, those who had uh, committed the crimes to justice. And so I think the challenge that the gentleman has made is a reasonable one, and it would be very interesting to know uh, how the, uh, not only the MILF, but all the other, all the other groups that uh, are operating uh, around that part of uh, Muslim Mindanao will be able to, uh, will be able to uh, help uh, in this case. As, uh, we, as we have seen again in many, many, in many cases, that especially kidnapping, although they are kidnapped in one place, uh, very, they are very, very quickly moved to another place, and often they continue to be moved around. And that kind of uh, very rapid movement around the different areas in not only Muslim Mindanao, but even in other parts of Mindanao or even other parts of the Philippines, uh, that kind of that kind of information can only come from the locals, and that is why it is very necessary, 
And again, to bring us back to the point about the ex officio membership of the chief mm. minister in the National Security Council, that yes. is precisely the kind of function mm. that he would be able to, that they would be able to assist our forces in uh, in combating the the kidnap for ransom as we are be, as we are seeing today. All right. Thank you for that, Mr. President. Allow me to move on to Section 65. This is the basic rights in the Auto Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. <clears throat> Among the basic rights, specifically Section 65F, is the right to seek constitutional change by peaceful and legitimate means. Can we be clarified as to the meaning or the phrase legitimate means? Is it the same with in accordance with the Constitution? Is that what you mean, Mr. President? That is certainly that is exactly what uh, what is meant by that. Uh, the peaceful and legitimate means is because there are there have been proposals coming from uh, the different groups in Muslim Mindanao that there has that, that there should be or they have proposed some constitutional changes that would be specific that would specifically affect Muslim Mindanao and they are allowed certainly to do that as any citizen is allowed to do that uh, but we 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 are making the point uh, we are emphasizing the point that it is through peaceful means and right. to use the normal means or the standard uh, means that, that, that we use for constitutional change um, in the national government. So uh, again, uh, to emphasize the point that it is peaceful, mm. that it is not by force, and secondly, that it is, uh, uh, it is in, in accordance with the, uh, the, 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 the standard procedures, the <laughs> standard rules that we have for any constitu for any process of amending the constitution. Therefore, uh, I take it that the gentleman would not mind if we be more precise and replace the paragraph or amend the paragraph, uh, replace legitimate means with in accordance with the constitution. That at the would, proper uh, time. At would, the proper that time. Would, that, that would uh, that would still uh, be logical and that would follow. And right. I think that it would not uh, be, it would not cause any confusion and maybe uh, uh, help uh, even in the clarity of uh, what we are uh, referring to in that uh, in that uh, statement. All right, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, section 67, vested property rights. Paragraph two states that the, with respect to legitimate grievances of the inhabitants in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region arising from any unjust dispossession of their territorial and propriety rights, customary land tenure or their marginalization shall be acknowledged. May we know if the statement is to be interpreted to mean that such acknowledged grievances will be binding to both the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region and the national government? Uh, in this uh, in this paragraph, we speak only of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, uh, and uh, this uh, this applies again not only to uh, uh, the Bangsamoro people, but again mm. uh, the IPs or the Lumads. Uh, what we now in, in this document we refer to as the non-Moro, non-Moro Indigenous peoples. Uh, again, uh, we have seen uh, oftentimes in Muslim Mindanao that much of the conflict is about land. And if it, is, can, if it can clearly be shown, if it can clearly be proven by any individual or any group that they have been dispossessed illegally or improperly of lands that belong to them, then that, that's, that has to be recognized by the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. And in that case, and reparations be made uh, so that to, to, to make sure that uh, the proper situation is uh, maintained. Um, again, this, this is something that is a, a, this is something that is an ongoing problem in uh, Muslim Mindanao because uh, the, the because of the, the claims that have been made on certain pieces of land that uh, cover hundreds of years, uh, and although they are not formally, they have not been formally uh, recorded. It has been, it is, it has been, uh, it, it is very clear, and it has been recognized and accepted by all the different groups that that land belongs to a certain group, and maybe another group will come in or another, uh, uh, and, and say this is in fact ours, uh, and take it over, and as long as it can be shown that that has been the case, 
then the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region must uh, be a, must recognize it. So it is uh, binding in the bar, in the, in autonomous the Bangsamoro region. Autonomous right. Region. The, okay. the Bangsamoro Autonomous, the Bangsamoro government must recognize that mm. there has mm. been uh, such a uh, such a uh, dispossession of uh, uh, of property that is rightly owned by uh, an individual or a group. To continue, Mr. President, the same paragraph states that the national government in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region shall take effective measures for adequate reparation of the loss in such quality, quantity, and status collectively beneficial to the inhabitants of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region and determined pursuant to the 1987 Philippine Constitution and existing laws. May we know who shall exercise this power to determine this adequate reparation? That will have to be determined by the, once the Bangsamoro the government parliament. is formed, they will have to um, organize uh, that mechanism. And we do not define it in the, in the uh, law as it is uh, merely to, to in, especially in this, uh, uh, in this uh, section, it is, we talk only about property rights. So mm. we leave it to the Bangsamoro government to decide on how that coordination process will be and furthermore, how, who, how the implementation will be. I imagine that if it is a case of, of, of land grabbing, for example, uh, that uh, then the, the, the usual authorities would have to be uh, the authorities, the, the policemen, would, would, it would be our police and the courts who would uh, enforce any such uh, finding that the land has been uh, improperly uh, seized from uh, uh, an individual or a group. The mention of uh, unjust dispossession, which is being contemplated in on in section on, contemplated on in section 67, does it include dispossession by private entities or persons as well? It includes any form of uh, mm. un, uh, of unlawful seizure of uh, of lands, uh, uh, and I, it, yes, it would apply to a group. It would be applied to an individual. Um, it would apply to any any of the inhabitants, and for that matter, anyone, um, uh, any inhabitant, any citizen of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm slightly um, confused, uh, Mr. President. The the paragraph states that the national government in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region shall take effective measures, etc., etc., for the reparation, huh? for the reparation of the loss. So if it's, if there are private entities and persons, uh, how does that work, Mr. President? Well, the I national government, uh, we are involving the national government. I, uh, the, the, the process would have to involve the courts and would have to involve the police. Uh, once the court has, uh, has uh, ma made a finding and issues an order as to uh, <coughs> how, uh, how, how the lands must be, um, must be redistributed or returned, uh, then that, uh, that, will be the, that will be the mechanism that, that they will use. Um, this, although this, is, uh, this, this last sentence is more to do with, is really referring to uh, lands that can be shown that were illegally and unjustly seized, but for one reason or another can no longer be returned. And so some other form of reparation must be found. Uh, and then that is, what, that is what the Bangsamoro government and the national government will have to determine how that, what form of, the, of reparation that will be. So right now we have not identified <clears throat> who shall have the power to exercise. If, if, if for example, the, the property is come, has come under the ownership of an innocent and uh, uh, and a purchaser, then uh, they, they have legally acquired rights mm. on that property. Those from whom it was originally taken, certainly not the in, innocent uh, uh, now the new landowner, uh, they will have to find some other form of reparation. Either they would find some other public land that they will assign to that person or depending upon negotiations with that person or persons uh, maybe it will be monetary 
uh, or in some other form. So that is the that that is uh, again that is going to be determined by the discussions and the coordination between the national government and the Bangsamoro government. Yeah, there, there, there is a possibility that, for example, lands that are tradi that traditionally belong to a certain group. Yeah, there, there, there is a possibility that, for example, lands that are tradi that traditionally belong to a certain group have been uh, were, were illegally seized from them 200 years ago or 300 years ago, and a community has grown up uh, in the meantime there, mm. and we cannot move the community out any longer. Uh, that is the kind of case that this uh, this uh, section and this sentence is referring to. All right, Mr. President, I will not belabor that point. I will, again, also, as far as I'm concerned, I'll take a second look. Mr. President, um, transitional justice. May we know what trans what do you mean by transitional justice? What is the nature? Uh, uh, are these enforceable in the courts of justice? Well, the Bangsamoro, the, the Bangsamoro people have long contended that they have, they have suffered uh, many injustices over, over the many years uh, <coughs> that they have come <coughs> under the, the, uh, the Republic. They have, become, they have become part of the Republic of the Philippines and that uh, uh, lands is one of the, one of the uh, uh, areas that that is referred to. But there are also all kinds of other other instances where uh, the Bangsamoro people uh, have uh, have grievances that they would like to bring up and that they would like to be recognized and of course uh, that they would like uh, to have corrected and that is what the transitional justice mechanism is about is to try and examine what are those grievances that uh, the Bangsamoro people would uh, would put forward uh, to say that this has happened and again uh, it is then for the Bangsamoro to determine what kind of reparation should be made. And that is why we have the language that says a, uh, the, it referring to historical injustices, human rights violations, marginalization, unjust possession of territory, and unjust, uh, unjust possession of their territorial sacred places and propriety rights and customary land tenure. So, uh, because uh, the in in, I sub, in very very <coughs> early on, uh, the customary land tenure, the custom, the ancestral domains, we were not recognized by uh, the cent by the national government, and the national government just saw it as public land, uh, just saw it as land that could be developed uh, in whatever way they saw fit. Uh, this these are the kind of grievances that the Bangsamoro people can say that uh, this has happened to us. And we feel that we are, we, it, this has been an unjust, um, a, a period where an, uh, there was an unjust uh, possession, seizure, again, of territorial lands, of sacred places, uh, because uh, the national government did not recognize it at the time. We are hopefully more enlightened in this day and age, and we do recognize such uh, uh, sacred places and, and traditional um, uh, traditional ownership of lands, but certainly, um, perhaps in the certainly in the last century and maybe the century before, uh, this was not the case. And this is what this system is hoping to uh, to, to correct. Can you differenti differentiate it with the Sharia Sharia Court already in place, Mr. President? No, this this uh, no. The Sharia courts will uh, are only to do. Yes, the the Sharia courts is the part. It will be part of the uh, be of the judiciary, whereas this will be uh, this is going to be undertaken by the executive department. The executive departments, both of the national government and of the Bangsamoro government. So, if there is a, if there is a, a information filed before a Sharia court on this case, I I think it would have to be elevated to uh, to. Um, uh, um, an RTC Indeed, or it would have to be elevated to a higher court. Uh, the Sharia courts are only uh, for uh, personal personal crimes um, in uh, in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, and uh, this kind of this kind of issue 
I think surpasses uh, that uh, surpasses that uh, categorization uh, because it has been a crime that has been ongoing for many many years. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Section 72. Bangsamoro Autonomous Regional Human Rights Office. Why is there a need for the creation of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Regional Human Rights uh, Office, Mr. President? Uh, uh, this what was, are the uh, functions of this uh, office? This was simply to remedy uh, because the, this is actually just uh, uh, the, a slight variation to the, propose, the proposal in the draft BBL. In the draft BBL, the human rights, the, the, the Bangsamoro government and the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region would have its own human rights commission. And again, that is a constitutional problem because the uh, Commission on Human Rights is, uh, is a constitutional body. And again, uh, any, it must have jurisdiction over all parts of the Philippines. Uh, in uh, oh. Section 7, Oh. of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. So therefore, there is, uh, they create a Bangsamoro Human Rights Commission which shall be independent and impartial. It does not, uh, it does not uh, make clear that uh, this is going to be an office of the, human, the Commission on Human Rights um, of the national government. And therefore, that is what we have tried to define. Uh, in, uh, that is why the language is that it is the Commission on Human Rights that will create the Bangsamoro uh, Autonomous Region Human Rights Office. Again, we have tried mm. to, to make it parallel mm. to the situation that we have in other local governments. So simply. Where we have the Human Rights Commission is, 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 is able to put up offices wherever it, fe it feels that uh, it is necessary. And so since uh, the subject of human rights uh, was raised in the draft BBL. We just made it. We just made sure that uh, there is a there is a um, there is a office of the uh, Commission on Human Rights. But again, it must clearly be under the control and supervision of the Commission on Human Rights. Yes. Therefore, uh, uh, they may overturn findings and recommendations. The Commission itself. Oh, certainly. certainly. The, the right. commission, because it is a, it, it, it would be a subsidiary office of the uh, the Commission on Human Rights uh, of the cent of the national government. Well, the the way I look at it, you are giving the Bangsamoro Parliament the power to determine the details in the establishments of the about Barangay eh, Barangay Bangsamoro Autonomous Regional Human Rights Office. Why not give it to the Commission on Human Rights? Yeah, it is, in fact, um, in, in essence, um, an, a, a branch office, if you, if you will, of the Commission on Human Rights, because it is the Commission on Human Rights that will create but, that office. Yeah, but... Uh, 70... Yes, yeah, 74 para, second paragraph. No, last paragraph. Details pertaining to the establishments, establishments of the Bar uh, uh, Human Rights Office, such as membership, terms of office, and com competency, competencies and responsibilities shall be provided by the Bangsamoro Parliament, oh. consistent with the provisions of the basic law. It's not the Commission on Human Rights. Well, no, the, the actual structure of that office uh, we again uh, left to the determination of the Bangsamoro government uh, in accordance with laws passed by the Bangsamoro parliament. And yes, uh, this is again an exercise uh, that we have devolved to, I, I rather, a power that we have devolved so to the, the, the Bangsamoro uh, government uh, in the interest of providing the autonomy uh, that the basic law is uh, creating and giving to the Bangsamoro government. It, it, it is the same again uh, in uh, the, with the, the 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 principle that I think we have run into several times uh, in uh, our discussions, uh, mm. Mr. President. That uh, as much as possible, if it is a if it is a, if it is practical, uh, and no, if no, no. we if the law allows it, then what we do is uh, we provide we give that autonomy, those uh, that discretion 
those decision making powers to the Bangsamoro, uh, the Bangsamoro government as much as possible. Uh, this again is uh, uh, because of our recognition that uh, they, the, it is the Bangsamoro people and the Bangsamoro government who will best know how to handle such issues in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. All right, I, I think I have a fairly good idea of what, what you mean, Mr. President. Uh, I was thinking earlier that uh, this might run counter to the uh, Constitution because the Commission on Human Rights was uh, actually created by the Constitution. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, some more government as much as possible. Uh, this again is. Uh, uh, because of our recognition that uh, they, the, it is the Bangsamoro people and the Bangsamoro government who will best know how to handle such issues in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. All right. I, I think I have a fairly good idea of what, what you mean, Mr. President. Uh, I was thinking earlier that uh, this might run counter to the uh, Constitution because the Commission on Human Rights was uh, actually created by the Constitution. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, I will move on, Mr. President. Uh, Section 74, Rights of Labor. It is declared in Section 74 on Rights of Labor that workers have right to peaceful, concerted activities, including the right to strike. However, I notice that there is no qualifier that the right to strike must be exercised in accordance with law, as declared in Section 3, Article 13 of the 1987 Constitution. Would it be appropriate if uh, such condition be added to Section 74? Will you uh, well, we have that, we, uh, we have it in the, on the, in the first and second line uh, that, again, it is, must be pursuant to the provisions of the 1987 Constitution. And, uh, the, and, uh, and the, last, the last sentence in, that same, in the first paragraph of Section 74 states, The right of workers uh, publicly or privately employed for munitions to the of the shall area. not be not for purposes not contrary to law. So again, we, are, uh, we, we, we put the limitation of it being in consonance, in, uh, 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 consistent with national law and the Constitution. Uh, albeit uh, in, a, in separate sentences. All right, Mr. President, I'll take that. Section 76, Participation of Women in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Uh, your Section 76 requires that there shall be at least one qualified woman appointed to the Bangsamoro Cabinet. May we know why only one woman uh, in the Bangsamoro Cabinet is required? Uh, why not two? Uh, Why is it not possible to require proportional representation or a higher number than one? Uh, I, I, we believe that it is uh, that having one uh, was sufficient. That is actually the what was uh, the the what was the finding of the committee after speaking and uh, hearing um, the different women's groups, uh, both in and out of the Bangsamoro, the proposed okay. Bangsamoro Autonomous okay. Region. Le le let me take, this, take it this way. When you say at least one, it doesn't mean that it is confined to one. That's right. It, uh, All can, right. it can be, be five. That might, there must be at least one. All right. Uh, and it is, uh, again, it leaves the discretion to the Bangsamoro, uh, the Bangsamoro Parliament uh, Chief Minister. Could be more than one. No? It's a, that's certainly the case, Mr. Could, President. Be, could be more than, okay, uh, just for the record. Definitely not a zero. That is, that is what we were trying to avoid, that there, be right. not, there will not be uh, a women's representative in the cabinet at all. Uh, so that is, why, that is why at least one is the language that we have okay. put in the substitute bill. Thank you. Um, Section 77, Rights of Children. The last paragraph of Section 77, Paragraph 3, states that there should be mechanisms to address violation committed against children in armed conflict. Should we require not just mechanism but the enactment of stiff penalties for these violations committed against children? Uh, that is implied uh, that the, the mechanisms, because the, if they are 
uh, if they are shown to be violations, then the way to address that issue would be uh, uh, would be legal action. Uh, so as long as it as it is clearly as shown to be a violation against children in armed conflict, uh, because there are there in, in the in the conf in the areas of conflict in Muslim Mindanao, and I suppose in all uh, conflict areas, the first victims are the innocents, the children. And that is why there's a very specific provision just for the uh, children who are victimized by fighting in conflict areas. There must be a special effort made to, to ensure that their safety and well-being is, uh, uh, is being monitored and is uh, uh, being promoted and protected by both the uh, Bangsamoro government and the national government. Okay. Section 78, Mr. President, integrated system of quality education. You require the Bangsamoro regional government to establish a complete and integrated system of quality education. May we know if the, if the phrase will include both Moro and non-Moro education? This is... Uh, this addresses more the uh, standardized curriculum. Uh, this is, speaks to that, uh, the standardized curriculum. Uh, Moro and non-Moro education. This, uh, th this addresses more the uh, standardized curriculum. Uh, this is, speaks to that, uh, the standardized curriculum, uh, mm -hmm. because we cannot... We must have consistency in the entire country right. uh, of having the same system, right. having the same curriculum, so that at least uh, what is being taught is uh, the same to all the children uh, in the entire country. Um, I have made the point before, but it, 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 does deserve, it deserves to be made again, that one of the problems that was raised when we studied this experience of Spain and Catalonia was uh, that one of the, the problems that they encountered was that they allowed, the, Sp the, the Spanish government allowed Catalonia, Catalonian schools or the Catalonian educational system to determine its own curriculum. And they said over the years, it turns out that this, is, uh, uh, th this system was simply, did not integrate uh, the, the culture of the Catalonians of Catalan with the rest of Spain. Because simply, and it, it makes very good sense, the children learn different things in Catalonia than they learn in the rest of Spain. Hence, they feel they are different from the rest of Spain. And so it turned out to be a divisive, um, uh, a divisive policy. And it is something that we, would wa we had wanted to avoid, so we wanted to make sure that there is a consistent policy for education. The, we do allow, of course, in fact, we, we, we encourage the promotion of uh, the establishment of institutes, um, foundations, um, other kind of uh, teaching institutions to promote and to, uh, to teach um, Islamic history, Islamic culture, uh, the ideas of the, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that have been uh, that have evolved through the centuries of Islamic philosophy all of this uh, is uh, of course uh, allowed by the um, by the by the basic law and uh, it is something that is uh, again extremely important to uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters that their uh, culture not disappear not be subsumed by the culture of the rest of the country so although they are still part of the rest of the country, they still maintain mm. what uh, their traditional culture is and the, many of the traditional ideas that uh, come with the, the Islamic faith. Yes. Um, well, further on, you require, well, I agree, I agree the, the issue of uniformity, no, but further on, you require that the Bangsamoro Regional Government adopt an educational framework that is relevant, responsive to the needs, ideals, and... So although they are still part of the rest of the country, they still mm. maintain what uh, their traditional culture is and the, many of the traditional ideas that uh, come with the, the Islamic faith. Yes. Um, well, further on, you 
required, well, I agree, I agree the, the issue of uniformity, you know, but further on, you require that the Bangsamoro Regional Government adopt an educational framework that is relevant, responsive to the needs, ideals, and aspirations of the inhabitants in the Bangsamoro Torus region. Considering that they will be part of the national government, may we know if that framework will be required to be approved by the DepEd? Well, yes. The, the, in fact, uh, the DepEd is, is uh, seen as, play, as being, um, having, again, a very important role to play in that they establish the government schools, the so-called public schools, and states and uh, state universities, colleges. Um, they will, uh, the CHED will also be uh, playing that important role. Uh, but that is why it, we cannot allow, we could not be allowed that, they, that there be no mm. uh, standardized educational system and curu curriculum in that area. And that is why we have uh, included this provision. Would they have ba basic courses such as Filipino and uh, Rizal required to... Yes, it will have uh, to be because we, 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 are, we, are pro we are proposing that, again, the curriculum that is taught in Bangsamoro schools will be, at least the core curric curriculum will be the same as in all other public schools around the country. Uh, again, when it comes to uh, uh, specifically Islamic philosophy, history, culture, um, discourse, then again, there can be specialized in uh, teaching institutions to, to address uh, that uh, function. Mm. Perhaps uh, you will not mind if I propose an amendment to specifically mention the DepEd. Uh, certainly, in, no, they, they, uh, they, at the proper time, Mr. President. <laughs> Kasi nakalagay lang, uh, consistent with the basic state policy. Yes, that is the language that we, uh, yeah. we, we are using. So uh, perhaps if we are going to name specifically the, the Department of Education, we must also include CHED uh, for the tertiary mm. level uh, educational All system. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. At the proper time, I will propose it and uh, hopefully the gentleman will uh, consider. Now, tribal university system. As I said, during the start of my interpolations, I, I need also to be educated uh, on the, the, the bill, Mr. President. What is tribal university system? And may we know the rationale for creating a tribal university system for the inhabitants of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, but only an institute for its non-Moro indigenous peoples? Parang nalito ko na konti well, this is again, uh, this refers to non-Moro ind indigenous peoples. Uh, again, this is uh, in the interest of promoting their own uh, culture and their own history and uh, their own uh, philosophies and beliefs. Uh, so that th despite the fact that we um, have the standardized curriculum, uh, the, uh, you, you, mm. we, we could say that Section 78 uh, refers uh, to the standardized system, uh, whereas Section 79 refers to a uh, system specific to the non-Moro right. indigenous people. I get it. Yes. I get it. I thought, uh, you know, I, I picture the university. I thought you were going to build well, one. I, so it, it's, it, a, it's a curriculum. It's a curriculum. It's, it's a curriculum. A, if, if, right. if, it, an, if an institution is, uh, put to, is, is organized and... Uh, uh, created, then uh, that would also be uh, uh, perfectly acceptable to uh, to satisfy this uh, this mandate that uh, the tribal uh, tribal teachings be promoted and uh, be uh, widespread, uh, be made widespread amongst uh, the non-Moro indigenous peoples. We must also remember that there are when we we cannot view uh, the non-Moro indigenous peoples as a homogeneous group. There are very many different subgroups. And uh, with the sub, with the uh, uh, attendant differences in uh, history, in thinking, even in religion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me move on to Section 80, Comprehensive and Integrated Health Service Delivery. May we know the definition of uh, essential goods as contemplated in Section 80? 
Are these essential goods related to contraceptives, family planning supplies in the RH law, or the, do you have the bill uh, would be the, able to define essential goods the, for the record? The, the, we, the, bunch, the, 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 the intent of uh, that section is merely to put, again, uh, the Bangsamoro, the health system, health care system within the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in line with the, the rest of the country. Now, if uh, the gentleman is referring to uh, the mandates that are given to the Department of Health on the, um, uh, uh, by the RH bill, then that will also apply in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Uh, it will be uh, noted that in, um, we, this, this was uh, touched upon, actually, mm. if, the, uh, if those of the Muslim faith were found that some of the, the elements of the RH bill objectionable and the, uh, the, the response that we, we got and the assessment that was made by the Islamic scholars, what, they, what the, was that for Islam, they are not. Um, although they, 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 for, the, uh, for the Roman Catholic uh, faith, uh, it could be argued, as it has been at, at length uh, in this body and in others, uh, it seems that the, in, in Islamic thinkers and the religious leaders uh, do not find uh, the idea, the ideas that are in uh, the RH bill objectionable. Uh, I am tempted to ask you for uh, an enumeration of what you mean by essential goods, eh? but uh, uh, it will be it will lengthy be in the in the bill. But the, uh, the, the, I think uh, the definition of essential goods will be done. Uh, it will be the same as uh, the defini or the enumeration of essential goods by the DOH. Uh, we are talking, of, of course, that the the obvious things such as medical supplies, uh, uh, medical uh, medicines, uh, drugs, and uh, uh, medicines for uh, for the inhabitants of Bangsamoro Autonomous right. Region. That is, uh, uh, but if it is to include, um, um, it, again, it, it, it will include those uh, goods that are uh, that the RH bill uh, has said that the uh, the that mandates the Department of Health to uh, right. to at least. Uh, give access to the citizenry mm -hmm. uh, to such uh, to such items. Right. I think uh, there was enough safeguard in the RH law uh, concerning this, so uh, I will take the answer of the gentleman. Thank you very much. Now, Section 84 speaks of the preservation of Bangsamoro Autonomous Region cultural heritage. May we know the equivalent of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region Commission for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage in the national government? What are counterparts Historical Commission, I suppose, would be the closest, uh, would be the closest parallel ah, to that. I see. Uh, but it, of course, as, as mm. it's stated in, the, uh, um, in, the, in, the orga in this provision, that it will be specific, it will be specific to uh, the, again, the history, culture, her and cultural arts, tradition, and heritage of the sultanates. Uh, again, this is to try to correct the, uh, the uh, this is similar to that provision that we had where we promote the, uh, the education and the, uh, uh, and, and the study of uh, the traditions and the history and arts of the non-Moro indigenous people. This the equivalent. This equivalent will be not this time for the sultanates, and uh, we must recognize that we there is not one single um, uh, text that applies to all of the sultanates. There is not one single, uh, shall we say, work of uh, uh, that, that that covers uh, the entire uh, all of the sultanates. There are there are nuances. There are differences between. Uh, the practices in the different cultures, so that is why we have named some of the sultanates that uh, in in the um, in the in the basic law. Again, we speak of the sultanates. We speak of the royal houses uh, in the same fashion that we had previously. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> the the next points I would like to raise are quite lengthy. This is about the 
Sharia justice system and the Sharia circuit courts and district courts. Um, I wish to uh, suspend my interpolation and include this in my uh, part three tomorrow, Mr. President. I will try to finish everything by uh, all the other parts by tomorrow. With all due respect to Senator Sondo, may the chair know how... Part three tomorrow, Mr. President. I will try to finish everything by uh, all the other parts by tomorrow. With, with all due respect to Senator Sondo, may the chair know how many more sessions he will require? Uh, hopefully, I will. The, the, the latest would be Wednesday, Mr. President. Unless the MILF uh, rescued the hostages, I will stop tomorrow, Mr. President. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the. Uh, Hopefully by Wednesday, Mr. President. Hopefully by Wednesday. Yes. Thank you, Senator Soto. That's thank all you very much. We wish to thank the gentleman for the. Uh, uh, I, I, I my thank the gentleman from Quezon City. Thank you, Mr. President. I will continue thank you. tomorrow. So you will be back on the floor tomorrow, Senator Yes, Soto? yes, Mr. President. All right. So we call this. Uh, Unless again. you are sick and tired of my voice. Uh, I will, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, the chair is now prepared to receive a motion to suspend consideration of the measure. Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill number 2894 under Committee Report number 200. A session, uh, I'm sorry, the consideration of the measure is suspended with the uh, manifestation of Senator Soto that he will continue with uh, availing of the period of interpolation at uh, tomorrow's session. So the, second, the Office of the Majority Leader we will please put this on top of the agenda tomorrow. So, so, consideration of the measure is suspended. A minute suspension, Mr. President. Suspended. One minute suspension. Yes.